Hello, and welcome to another Blue Monkey Forensics video. In this episode, we are going to unbox the Synabis Write Blocker from Synabis Analytics from Germany. Whenever you're going to be handling original evidence, whether it is to image the evidence or to preview or triage the evidence, it's highly recommended that you use hardware write blocking. This is even if you are using software write blocking. Why? Because extra protection never hurts, right? And depending on the accreditation body of your laboratory, it may be part of your standard operating procedures to use hardware write blocking. So for this video, we are going to look at one of the products out there on the market for SATA hard drive write blocking. It's called a Synabis write blocker. The other similar products on the market are the Tableau Forensic SATA IDE bridge and the WeBTech Forensic UltraDoc. The cost for this product is 199 euros or about $209 for our American viewers. This is a great price for insurance against accidentally altering your evidence. Let's go ahead and unbox the Synabis Write Blocker. The kit comes with an instruction booklet, which is in German. Unfortunately, I don't read German, so we'll put it aside. You also get a USB-A to USB-B cable, which connects the Write Blocker to your computer. Next, we have the write blocker itself, which has a slot for a 3.5 inch drive and an adapter for a 2.5 inch drive. On the back of the box, we have a plug for a power adapter barrel connector, an on off switch, and the USB B connector. Lastly, there is a power adapter that delivers 12 volts and up to 3 amps maximum. The wall plug is the European Type C style, so Americans will need to get an adapter for the American wall socket, and the other countries will need to use the respective adapter for your country. One thing you will notice is that there is no software to install. This box works with Windows, Linux, and Mac operating systems. So this is a plus as there are some write blockers which require a Windows driver, and hence only works with Windows. I'm going to first use Windows in conjunction with this write blocker to see how it works. I'm going to be using a 2.5 inch spindle drive for this test. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Disk Manager in Windows to see what I have connected, which at this point is just the 250 gig internal drive. Now I am going to connect the drive directly to my Windows machine without the write blocker. And after a few seconds, the one terabyte drive is seen. And we can see that it is listed as online. And we can use the menu to format the drive, to delete the volume, and change drive letters. So let's go ahead and assign a drive letter to this drive so we can look at it. I'm going to add the drive and then look for the next available drive letter, which is D. Once a drive letter is assigned, I'm going to use Windows Explorer to go to the D drive. Then I'm going to go ahead and create a new text document. Let's just name it newdoc.txt for simplicity. And then I'm going to launch Netpad++ to write some text into the file. And once that's done, I'm going to put the drive offline in Disk Manager. And then physically disconnect the drive from the system so Disk Manager can no longer see it. Then I'm going to reconnect it back via the Synabis Analytics write blocker. And once I turn the write blocker on, we can see that the one terabyte drive is recognized by the system. But this time notice that it says that it is a read-only device. When I look at the right-click menu, I no longer get the options to change the drive letter, to format, or even to delete the volume. The write blocker appears to be doing its job. Let's further test this out by going to the Windows Explorer and then into the D drive and then look at the new doc.txt file. The right click menu seems to be missing the delete option, so we cannot delete this file. So another good sign that the write blocker is working. Now I'm going to open up the file again in Notepad++ and add a line to it. And when I try to save the file, a pop-up panel comes up and tells me that the file is protected and asks if I want to launch Notepad++ in administrator mode. Sure, let's do that and see what happens. So it looks like Notepad++ relaunches in admin mode, but when I hit Control s to save, it tells me that the file saving has failed. 
All right, fine. We'll just close the program and relaunch it. But when I relaunch Notepad++, it looks like the file has changed with the additional line. So did the write blocker fail? Hmm. Let me try to remove the system volume folder. All right. But I don't see the delete option in the menu. And I can't add any new files or folders on D as those menu items are not available either. All right, so I'm just going to close out the Explorer window and then take the disk offline and then put it back online to see what's going on. Launching File Explorer and looking at the new doc.txt file, I see that the additional lines are there. So the write blocker clearly failed, right? Hold that thought. I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to launch the command window and use the command line to look at the file. So after getting the command prompt, I'm going to change the folder to D and then get the directory listing and then try to delete new doc.txt. And the system comes back and tells me that the media is write protected. And if I look at the file here, we see that the additional lines are not part of the file. So question is, why did we see the added lines in Notepad++? It's because the program cached the last modifications in memory, but in reality, the changes were never reflected on the disk. So if you actually close this file out in Notepad++ and reopen it again, then you will note that it is not changed. Next, I'm going to use this write blocker with FTK Imager to see the imaging speed. So I'm going to plug my source drive into the write blocker and turn it on. We see it appear in Disk Manager. Next, I'm going to connect my destination drive and watch that show up. Then I'm going to put it online and then check that a drive letter was assigned to it. Next, I launch FTK Imager. I go ahead and click on the icon to create a disk image of a physical drive. And then with the selector here, I go down and look for the Western Digital 1 terabyte drive as the source. Select the destination image type of E01. And I'm going to skip entering the metadata for this test. But you should fill this info in in real life. Look for the D drive with the volume named staging that I've already prepared. And then select the destination folder and give it an image name. Once all that is ready, go ahead and hit finish to get it running. So now that the imaging is running, I'm going to give the system a minute or so to get into a steady state. And then we can see that the estimate time is about two hours. And then the speed ends up to be around 136 megs a second at the 20% mark when I kill this process. I am pretty confident that if I let this thing run further, it might degrade a little bit more, but probably not significantly. All right, so that is with the uh, Synabis write blocker. Now let's see what the speed is compared to another write blocker. I'm going to go ahead and reboot my machine just to make sure everything is fresh. And then connect the source drive to the WeebyTech USB 3.1 write blocker. If you want to see this write blocker in action, go ahead and click on this video up here on top. For this video, we can see this drive show up in the disk manager. And then we're going to connect our staging drive and then assign it a drive letter of D. Go, we're going to go ahead and launch FTK Imager again. And once again, we're going to click on the icon to create an image. And then we want a physical drive. And then for the source, we're going to select the Western Digital 1 terabyte drive as a source. And we're going to keep all the other settings the same. So once we have it running for a while, we can see that the speed is pretty much the same as it was with the Synabus. It, it's estimating that it will take about two hours to complete. And it's running at a rate of around 136 megabytes a second at the 20% mark. So it looks like the two write blockers are pretty compatible speed-wise. The last thing I'm going to do in Windows is to use WeebyTech's write blocking validation software to see how this write blocker performs. You can download the software from WeebyTech's website. Go ahead and see the link in the description below. 
Once I have the software up and running, I connect the hard drive via the Synabis write blocker, and then I'm gonna hit the play button to start the testing. And then it comes back very quickly, letting us know that of the features that are supported, it passed them all. So that's a great confirmation that this write blocker works. Now for testing on the Linux platform, I will be using the Kane Forensics Distro Release 13. One thing to note is that Kane comes with software write blocking automatically already turned on. So I'm gonna to try to turn it off so I can test out this hardware write blocker by itself. And it looks like from the unblock tool that the hardware write blocking is engaged so that we see slash dev slash SDC as a read only device even after we try to toggle it to read write. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount the hard drive and try to write to it. It fails as expected, so that's good. And I'm gonna go ahead and unmount the drive now. Now I'm gonna image the drive, which is connected through the write blocker, and then write the results to slash dev slash null, just to see the speed of reading through the write blocker. And as we're letting this thing run for a little bit, it seems like the speed is gonna stabilize out to about 120 megabytes per second. If I connect the drive to the Linux box without a write blocker, I'm gonna go ahead and use DC3DD to read in this drive and then write the output to slash dev slash null because we don't actually care for the output. We just want to see the speed of which it reads. And after it settles out for a little bit, it seems like the speed is going to stabilize to about 137 megs per second. So it seems like the write blocker does slow things down a little bit here in Linux. But I would say that for the protection that you get, using the write blocker is definitely the way to go because the difference is maybe 10% slower in speed. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we took a look at the Synabius write blocker. So some of the positives for this product is that it works on all major operating systems, right? So Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Another positive is that it is a less expensive alternate to the other products on the market. The Weeby Tech write blocker is around $400 and the Tableau runs about 450 US dollars. But keep in mind that these products have features that the Synabis lacks, so it's not exactly an apples to apples comparison, but if you're just looking at the basic uh, write blocking functionality, this product does give you that baseline functionality. Another great thing is that it's very simple to operate. There's no drivers needed, no switches to toggle. Lastly, it works with three and a half and two and a half inch SATA drives. Drawbacks is that the manufacturing for this product could be improved. The plastic front of the box came detached as I was um, removing hard drives from the box. Uh, there wasn't any real functionality loss, but it just made the box feel flimsy. And then I also broke a piece off from the uh, two and a half inch SATA adapter. So you might want to be a little careful when you are uh, inserting that particular piece. For more videos on other hardware write blockers, watch this video here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.